What is going on, IF Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna talk about a new study that released a meta analysis study. Now, in the hierarchy of studies and what matters and what doesn't matter, the pundits that absolutely detest intermittent fasting love to say that meta analysis sits at the top. Well, a study has just been released in October of 2019 that will challenge everything that they think they know about intermittent fasting. Stay tuned. Okay, quickly guys, before I start, this video is brought to you by yours truly, Fledge Fitness and the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. If you haven't gotten yours yet, it's only $16.50. All you gotta do is click that link down in the description below or you can click the card in the top right hand corner and it'll take you right there and of course with the amazing swivel and ergonomic design of the jump rope you can't go wrong with the flesh fitness jump rope if you've been watching me for some time you know that these jump ropes always sell out so get yours while they last now let's go ahead and jump right into the video now if you didn't know when researching we like to use scientific studies to make a better determination about any specific biological or physical thing that exists so if we want to see that calorie restriction works we create a study with a control group that doesn't do calorie restriction versus control groups that do calorie restriction and then we see if one loses weight over the other and then we can make a determination. But the more important thing is how many of those studies with different variations that can produce a very similar outcome, how many of those studies exist because that will give you a better understanding because everyone is different there's so many variations there's so many limitations in each individual study so looking at a broader picture zooming out and looking at all of the studies and compiling them gives you a better understanding of what is actually happening with whatever biological mechanism or whatever intervention you're trying to uh, pull answers from Right? So then what happens is that that puts meta-analysis at the top of the pyramid in terms of what is more impactful in terms of scientific literature, in terms of studies. You have anecdotal and mechanistic evidence all the way at the bottom and you have meta-analysis at the top because a meta-analysis is basically a snapshot of a bunch of studies. So that is what we have for you here today. And the pundits love to say that meta-analysis is one of the things that they look towards and and it's what pushes them to say that intermittent fasting doesn't have any inherent benefits although they are still selective when they are looking at meta-analysis because the 40 page meta-analysis that is touted as the reason why intermittent fasting doesn't have any innate benefit over things like calorie restriction is incredibly flawed and the reason it's flawed is because unlike other things that you are studying intermittent fasting has a broad umbrella so if you just take one method of intermittent fasting one that tends to fail more than the others for example the 5-2 diet or modified alternate day fasting those tend to fail because the participants are able to uh, eat during their fasting window which kind of throws off the whole premise of the fasting and the hormonal shifts and going into that post-absorptive range after 12 hours of fasting those things can be interrupted thus breaking that chain and, and not giving you an actual depiction of if the fasting protocol that you're utilizing which is most likely the 16-8 or the 20 versus 4 hours or the one meal a day or alternate day fasting not being modified those are the, the protocols that people tend to use when doing intermittent fasting. Not a lot of people use just the modified version or the 5-2 version. So if you use the modified version and 5-2 version, yeah, then those studies can apply to you. But if you don't, then those studies won't apply to you because it's not the protocol that you're using. But there are other meta-analyses that I've talked about that look at 70 different pieces of literature that show that there is a benefit, but those studies focus predominantly on Ramadan fasting. This meta-analysis that we're going to talk about today looks at a broad aspect using search terms like intermittent fasting, using search terms like time-restricted feeding, meal frequency, 
alternate day fasting. Unlike the other paper that use only terms like modified alternate day fasting or modified intermittent fasting, search terms that will populate intermittent fasting protocols that aren't full fasting during your fasting periods, which could of course skew the information. This meta-analysis actually tries to integrate intermittent fasting protocols that have zero caloric intake during the fasted period. Now, let's dive into this study so you can know what the results are for this amazing meta-analysis. Okay, so the study was published in October 7th of this year, 2019, in the Journal of Clinical Medicine. It was peer-reviewed and selected around September, but published in October. Now, before I tell you what the results of this study is, I'm going to tell you what the stipulations were for these studies to be included. One, you could not have any chronic disease, so it was a general population with no chronic illness at all. So even if you had diabetes, for example, you could not be part of this study. If, however, the groups had pre-diabetes, they were allowed to be included in this study because they just wanted to look at the general population as best they can. So they removed any chronic illnesses. Anything that used too many variations of the fasting protocol, which I loved. So if you have modified this, modified that, or you're doing other things where people are eating 1,000 calories, 1,200 calories, but you're calling that intermittent fasting, those things were omitted. Those things were not part of the study. It had to be either a randomized control trial or a clinical control trial. So there had to be a control there so that they can look at the differences between the two. And they looked at intermittent fasting versus regular diets or just calorie restriction, continuous calorie restriction. So just restricting calories, but eating at whatever normal clip simply uh, not fasting, not having a fasting protocol, which meant less than 12 hours of fasting and then eating at a caloric restriction. So they compared that, that group versus the intermittent fasting group. The computer analysis found over 2,814 different papers. Now, keep in mind, it finds this using the search term, but then it gets stripped down because it needs to make sure that it follows all of these criteria because they wanted it to be as strong as possible. Having randomized control trials, clinical control trials, those things were important, making sure that no one had any chronic illnesses. Those things were important. They also wanted to make sure it had baseline information and then the final information. So basically the starting point of the groups before they started the diet intervention and the ending points. They wanted those numbers. They wanted it to include body mass index, fat mass, lean tissue, if lean tissue was lost or if lean tissue was conserved. They wanted all of that information. So they stripped it as much as possible, made sure that those points were followed and it whittled it all the way down to about 12 papers. So in this mass 2,814 paper collection, all of those papers had so many limitations that did not touch on these important aspects, which I find to be very, very important, having controlled trials, randomized trials, all of that, and then also having the correct intermittent fasting protocols where people are not consuming anything. So with all of that down, it brought it down to 12 papers, and guess what happened? What were the conclusions? It found that body mass index was significantly reduced in the intermittent fasting group versus just the caloric restriction group or the regular diet group. It found that lean tissue was conserved, was conserved in the intermittent fasting group versus the caloric restriction or the regular diet group. They found that intermittent fasting may actually provide metabolic benefits. Insulin resistance was reduced in the intermittent fasting group versus the caloric restriction or regular diet group. Adiponectin was increased in the intermittent fasting group. And if you didn't know, adiponectin is a protein hormone that regulates glucose levels as well as facilitating fatty acid breakdown. And this was elevated in the intermittent fasting group versus the control group. Fat mass tended to decrease in the intermittent fasting group versus the control group. So this is a meta-analysis. The highest 
point of the pyramid in terms of studies being put together and giving you a more accurate understanding of what's actually going on biologically uh, in regards to a diet intervention. This is a meta-analysis telling you that intermittent fasting on all of these points, body mass index, lean tissue conservation, fat mass decrease, adiponectin increase, insulin resistance decrease are all in favor of intermittent fasting versus the control group. And keep in mind that yes, calorie restriction is needed. This isn't to say that without calorie restriction, intermittent fasting will give you all of these benefits versus calorie restriction. Calorie restriction needs to be there. But the thing that makes intermittent fasting work so well is that it's doing this hormonal cascade that is protecting muscle, reducing body fat mass more aggressively, partitioning the calorie secretion, the, the calorie burn, focusing itself more on the fatty tissue versus the lean tissue, which has been observed in just being at a continuous caloric restriction but is improved when in an intermittent fasting diet protocol and there's a specific quote that i want to pull from this study and read to you guys with similar caloric intake reductions during continuous calorie restriction the difference in fasting time affects the mass and distribution of fat tissues in a meta-analysis study so if you was ever on the fence and said wait this study doesn't matter and that study doesn't matter and you need a meta-analysis to prove me wrong here it is and this meta-analysis is not a specific one like ramadan fasting only which was a great one but just it just looked at ramadan fasting this is overall time restricted feeding one meal a day uh alternate day fasting all of these different protocols are in this meta-analysis so if you're a pundit and you just don't like intermittent fasting, but you keep on telling that scientific studies is the only thing that makes anything relevant, then what do you have to say about this? And of course, every study has limitations and I could tell you what the limitations of this study is. It was reduced in the amount of people that it had because it was looking for the standard deviation and the mean of all of the weight reduction, body mass index. So it ha all the studies had to have that data point. If it didn't, it wasn't selected, which reduced the amount of people that could have participated in this overall meta-analysis. Also removing chronic illnesses from the group means that you cannot prescribe intermittent fasting based on this meta-analysis to someone who has a chronic illness. There are other studies that, that show you know against diabetes, working with people who have diabetes or different chronic illnesses and intermittent fasting working but this meta-analysis did not touch on that. It was just healthy general population. Of course, you can be obese and all of that. They had that mixture in there. The only thing that you didn't have was chronic illnesses such as diabetes, for example. And there you have it. Those are the limitations. Yes, calorie restriction is an integral part in the weight loss. And it even states in the study that there has to be calorie restriction for this to even work. But the thing is, when the calorie restriction is the same, the hormonal benefits lie with the intermittent fasting group. The calorie partitioning of burning fat, retaining muscle, those things lie with the intermittent fasting group. So this is an amazing study and I will link it down in the description below if you want to go ahead and check it out for yourself. And of course, as always, guys, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon. I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here. And of course, as always, I'll see you on Sunday for another FAQ. Peace!